This is Electricity 2 Motor and Controls, HUT 119, Basic Electricity Theory, Week 2. The objectives of this lesson for this week is to support the HVC learner to understand what causes electrons to flow, gain knowledge of what makes up an atom, discuss electric motor force, discuss what is power and power factor, develop an understanding of Ohm's law, explain resistance, explain voltage, explain current, and calculate conversions from electrical energy to heat energy. The introduction. In the HVAC refrigeration industry, the equipment is powered by electricity current and electrical control devices are used to operate the equipment automatically. Therefore, an HVAC technician must have a proper understanding of basic and advanced electricity systems. Without this knowledge, the technician will struggle with the simplest problems. This week's assignment will give the HVAC learner a review of basic electricity before moving on to more. Some of the terms that a student need to go over and review is alternating current, direct current, ampere, atom, conductor, electrical power, electron, matter, Ohm's law, voltage, and watts. What are atoms consist of? Atom consists of a nucleus which may have a proton and a neutron. The nucleus is in the center of the atom. Around the nucleus is the valence shells which contains the electrons. The electrons actually flow around the nucleus and travels at very high speeds. The electrons are negative charge and the protons are positive charge. The nucleus has a neutral charge. What makes a good conductor? In the outer valence shell is what determines the conductivity of the material. Any substance that have one or two electrons in its outer shell will be a good conductor. Copper, silver, gold, and aluminum have only one or two electrons in its valence shell and are very good conductors. So what make poor conductors? Any substance or material that have more than five electrons become a good insulator. A semiconductor is a poor conductor and a poor insulator. To have an insulator, it is important to keep current from flowing into unwanted areas such as wires. Wires are coated normally with some type of insulation material such as rubber or plastic which will impede the flow of current through it. Attraction of electrons. Positive and negative charge will attract each other. The same charge or like charges will repel each other. This attraction and repulsion is important for mechanical action of motors. So therefore, understanding how um, this attraction or repulsion works, it's what generates a motor to operate and turn a rotor to get mechanical work. Static electricity. Static electricity is the simplest form of current flow and it is not controllable. Search things as static electricity, like a spark when you rub your feet on a carpet and touch a doorknob, and it would cause a very small shock. Other type of static electricity, like lightning outdoors, it's uh, uncontrollable, and, but it controls a very high potential of energy. So any type of uh, static electricity, such as from the old style of electrical tape, which we call friction tape, if you pull it very rapidly, it would cause uh, static electricity to form between it. Electricity produced from chemical reactions. 
Batteries produce a chemical reaction that in turn generate a direct current from the uh, electricity. It will form electricity by uh, the chemicals inside of it connecting to the plates and it will and there is a load and conductors connected to the battery it will allow current to flow to the load. Batteries will have a position that will be a positive pulse and a negative pulse and it will only allow current to flow when there is a load connected to it. So batteries in the chemical reaction will actually store electrons um, inside of the battery itself. So the strength of the battery is based on the number of, of cells it has. The higher the number of cells, the higher the voltage of the battery. Types of current flow. Electricity produced from magnetism. Alternating current can be produced from a magnetic field being introduced into a wire. When a wire is moved through a magnetic field, the electrons in the wire will move. If a wire is put into a coil, the voltage will increase based on the number of turns in the coil of wire. Thereby, the more turns or the bigger the coil, the stronger the voltage will be in that coil and it be produced. So as the magnetic field induced into a coil, the faster the coils move through the uh, magnetic field, the faster the current will. Also. So what makes a good conductor? For a current to flow, it needs to have a path non-obstructed to allow full flow of power to the load. Therefore, materials with only one or two electrons in it, its valence shell will work. Because copper is an abundance and in its availability, it will have one electron in its outer shell valence and its cost is relatively low. It is used over other type of materials. So copper is one of the best conductors used because of its low cost and because of its abundance. So what makes a good insulator? Because conductors allow current to flow easily, insulators are used to impede current flow. For safety reasons, insulators are used to keep current from flowing in areas where it can be unsafe. Materials such as rubber, plastic, ceramics, and glass are used to insulate current from potential dangerous areas. Power source can be either AC or DC power but the power source is always available and sometimes we call that potential energy because it's there, it's not being used, it's not generating an energy or consuming an energy, but it's there. So all electrical circuits will contain three basic items, the power source, the conductor, and the load. The power source is the beginning of the electrical circuit and it is the source of energy to operate the tended piece of equipment, the load. The power source can be either alternating current or, again, DC current. So a conductor, some of the characteristics of conductors are, it must have very low resistance. All material have some resistance, but it should be extremely low. I mean, when you measure the resistance, it's uh, almost read nothing. It must allow current to flow without impedance, which means restriction. It is mostly made of copper or aluminum because it's cost and availability. There are many other types of conductors, but do not fit this criteria of abundance and cost. A load is used to do work. So loads are anything that consume energy. Conductors do not consume energy, thus it allows current to flow to the load without losing and losses of energy. All loads do some type of work. Some of the types of loads are motors, light bulbs, transformers, relays, and contactor coils. 
electrical heaters, and solenoid coils. So what is voltage? It can be called a potential difference. Voltage is the force of the electrical system that pushes the electrons through a electrical circuit. In comparison, if we take the comparison of water and how it flows to our uh, sinks and other type appliances, we measure water force in PSI, pressure per square inch. But voltage is the measurement for electricity, the force that is pushed the electrons through the, the wire. To have potential difference, there must be a positive and a negative current in the circuit. The load in the electrical system is what divides the positive side from the negative side. So there will always be a difference from both sides, the positive and a negative, which we call the potential difference. For current to flow through a circuit, it must be a difference in the current flow. So resistance. Resistance is the slowing down or impeding the flow of electrons in a electrical circuit. All loads have resistance while conductors do not have resistance or very low resistance. Resistance is needed to consume energy or it will pass through the load and will not operate. The higher the resistance in a circuit or load, the higher amount of voltage the load will contain or drop. So current is the flow of electrical or electrons. The electrical flow is the speed or movement of the electrons in a circuit. So when the resistance is increased in a circuit, the current will decrease. When the resistance in a, is decreased in a circuit, the current will increase. Kilowatts or watts is the measurement of energy. Basically, measuring energy of electricity, it is basically looking at the relationship between the voltage and the current flow. So the force and the movement of the electrons. So watts is the measurement of electrical energy. A thousand watts equal one kilowatt. To determine the amount of energy a load is consuming, we will measure the energy in watts. Therefore, watts is the voltage applied to the circuit multiplied by its current flow. Watts equals voltage times amperage. Sometimes it could be expressed power. So in other words, power is watts. So power equals voltage times current or P equals E times I. A power factor is a measurement when we're dealing with energy. The energy used in an electrical circuit is consumed by the load in a circuit. However, there are always some losses due to inefficiencies in a circuit. The power factor is the true power measure with a watt meter divided by the calculated power and is expressed as a percentage. The power factor is only used in AC circuits. Ohm's law is a way to understand the relationship between how voltage current and resistance and how it will affect each other. So Voltage is expressed as the letter E, the capital E. Current is expressed as the capital letter I. Resistance is expressed as the capital letter R. So look at these different formulas. Voltage equals E equals I times R. Current is I equals E divided by R and resistance equals R equals E divided by 
I. So to summarize this chapter on basic electricity, the state of matter is in three different states, solids, liquid, and gases. Atoms are the smallest particles and are made of electrons, protons, and neutrons. Alternating current is produced from induction of magnetism into a coil of wire. Direct current is produced from a chemical reaction into metal plates inside the battery. Electrical energy can be transferred into different forms of energy such as electrical energy and to mechanical energy. Ohm's law is used to determine voltage, resistance, and current in electrical circuits. Voltage is the force to push electrons through a circuit. Amperage is the flow or movement of electrons in a circuit. And resistance is the impedance of electrons in a circuit.